The BJP has come out all guns blazing, targeting former Vice President Hamid Ansari, not just on the basis of what this Pakistani journalist has claimed, but also asking, why did Hamid Ansari share the dais with a radical Islamist organization, Popular Front of India's front organization, or according to the BJP, badmouth India at a blatantly anti-India platform, the Indian American Muslim Council. The Congress says these allegations are absolutely baseless. We debate. I'm Gaurav Savant. Let's get started with the headlines on India first. <laughs> President Gotwaya Rajpaksha flees Sri Lanka, escapes with family to Maldives. Protesters take over the Prime Minister's office. No sign of the anger waning. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe takes over as acting Prime Minister, declares emergency. Opposition rejects the appointment, demands Ranil Vikramasinghe's resignation as the acting President of Sri Lanka. Rains continue to wreak havoc across five states, more than 80 dead in Gujarat. Situation grim in Maharashtra, Telangana and Karnataka. COVID cases on the rise once again. Center announces free booster dose for all adults for the next 75 days at government centers. Actor Riya Chakravarti accused of supplying and trafficking drugs by the Narcotics Control Bureau. The charge, she says, the actor pushed Sushant Singh Rajput into addiction. The BJP has sought a clarification from former Vice President Hamid Ansari on claims of a Pakistani columnist who boasted on a Pakistani platform about spying for Pakistan's ISI during his multiple visits to India, including once where he shared a platform with Hamid Ansari. And we'll show you those images on your television screen. The former vice president has denied these allegations, calling them a litany of lies. Our political bureau gets us more. Looking at these images, we'll get you more on this story. We will get you the explosive Spygate revelations. We will get you more on what the Bharatiya Janta Party has claimed. The, it has been countered by the Congress and, of course, by Hamid Ansari. Using Nusrat Mirza's claim on a Pakistani platform that he spied for ISI on his multiple visits to India during the Congress regime, the BJP has hit out at the Congress, specifically targeting the former Vice President of India, Hamid Ansari. The question remains, are these charges serious or spurious? Joining me on India First is Shehzad Poonawala. Shehzad represents the Bharatiya Janta Party. Swati Malik represents the Congress. I also have with me on this broadcast N.K. Sood. A former raw officer. We'll talk to them in greater detail. But first, our top story. Pakistani columnist Nusrat Mirza saying he spied for ISI on his multiple visits to India, including when Hamid Ansari was vice president between 2007 and 17, has stirred a hornet's nest. The BJP came out all guns blazing, targeting the former vice president and questioning the Congress party, alleging the Congress was soft on Pakistan. So, this Pakistani patrakar tells us that this is not a very important thing to do with one or two, two or three, four or five, when he came to the Bharat Yatra, which was called the Bharat Yatra, उसने ये जानकारी हमीद अंसारी जी से ली और इस जानकारी को 
भारत के खिलाफ इस्तेमाल किया गया मिर्जा क्लेम ही वॉज एट एन इवेंट विथ दी देन वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया हामिद अंसारी एंड रिटर्न टू पाकिस्तान टू शेयर इंफॉर्मेशन विद ऑफिसर्स ऑफ आई एस आई दो हजार दस में फिर हमें बुलाया गया है जब हामिद अंसारी साहब नायब सदर थे तो एक सेमिनार था बहुत बड़ा जिसमें टेरिज्म पे था तो उन्होंने उस पर भी हमने इन्हें दो हजार ग्यारह में मैं लास्ट गया था जब वो एक बार दिल्ली में एक जफर इस्लाम साहब हैं जो मिली गजट निकालते हैं वहाँ का अखबार अंग्रेजी में उन्होंने हमें बुलाया था तो फिर हम यहाँ से हम ले गए थे The BJP sought a clarification from Hamid Ansari and the Congress Party on why was a Pakistani columnist and journalist with a stated anti-India position on Jammu and Kashmir repeatedly invited to India and given multi-city visas. The BJP also asked the Congress to come clean on being soft on Pakistan-backed radical Islamist terror and senior Congress leaders not only giving Pakistan a clean chit but also trying to pass off. 2611, the worst terror attack on India as Hindu terror. जो प्रक्रिया है सरकार किसी भी व्यक्ति को जो भारत का दौरा करता है वीजा देती है तो आप वक्तव्य सुनिए पाकिस्तानी पत्रकार का कहता है कि वैसे तो वीजा तीन शहरों में जाने का मिलता है भारत में लेकिन मुझे सात शहरों में जाने का वीजा मिला फॉर्मर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट हामिद अंसारी डिनाइड द चार्जेस कॉलिंग देम अ लिटनी ऑफ फॉल्सहुड ही इंसिस्टेड एनी इन्विटेशन इश्यूड ऑन हिज बिहाफ इज ऑन द एडवाइज ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स ही वेंट ऑन टू से आई हैड इनोग्रेटेड द कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन टेररिज्म ऑन डिसंबर इलेवन टू द इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ ज्यूरिस ऑन इंटरनेशनल टेररिज्म एंड ह्यूमन राइट्स As is the normal practice, the list of invitees would have been drawn by the organizers. I never invited him or met him. The Congress Party too came out strongly to defend the former vice president and the party's stand on terror. कि आतंकवाद का खात्मा करने के लिए क्या कांग्रेस की जो सरकार रही उसकी ये नीति थी? हमारे देश की खुफिया जो अति गोपनीय जानकारी है उसको साझा आप कर रहे हैं ऐसे देशों से जो इसका इस्तेमाल करेंगे आतंकवाद के लिए अ फॉर्मर रॉ ऑफिसर हैज ऑल्सो रेज क्वेश्चन अबाउट द कंडक्ट ऑफ हामिद अंसारी वेन ही वॉज इंडिया एम्बेसडर टू ईरान अलेजिंग द सेफ्टी ऑफ रो ऑफिसर्स वॉज कॉम्प्रोमाइज द बीजेपी ऑल्सो इंसिस्टेड दैट हामिद अंसारी नीडेड टू कम क्लीन on the question of sharing a platform with a radical islamist organization the popular front of india and the anti india organization indian american muslim council allegedly funded by pakistan's isi bureau report india today let me quickly bring in shahzad punawala into this conversation Shahzad Hamid Ansari is clarified he's never met this shady Pakistani journalist congress asks why target the former vice president on the allegations of some non descript non entity look nusrat mirza's disclosures today have reflected the inc's ppp pro pakistan parast policy and let me articulate it this is not just about hamid ansari but there are some questions about him but the most important question is that this person who had anti india views he had anti kashmir views he said india's muslims are undergoing genocide why was he allowed to enter five times into india between 2005 to 11 did the home minister know what his intentions were clearly the cities he went to and he was allowed to go to seven cities as opposed to three on a visa and that was because of kasuri getting him a favor through somebody in the indian government who was those who were those people apart from that the cities that he went to hyderabad patna bengaluru delhi you remember that all of these places saw bomb blasts apart from that this is the same period of time at which you saw 2611 take place and pakistan was not given a befitting reply by congress party in fact congress leaders came out and said 2611 was done by the hindus they in fact went ahead and they even tried to put the hindu terror spin on maligaon and on samjhota blast and finally what about the fact that pakistan's tunes are sung even today by the congress party beat on 370 balakot surgical 
surgical strike Pulwama, they still okay. sing the same tunes. Now the question is for Hamid Ansari, and there are three or four. Is Ms. Swati Malik, the Congress spokesperson, I believe, is she denying that Rahul, Mr. Hamid Ansari shared the stage with PFI in 2017? There's a news report to confirm that. Is she denying so that let's Mr. Take Hamid this Ansari, one by one. Let's Hamid take Ansari this one shared by the one. platform of IAMC and they, he went and disrespected India at an international platform which is backed by the ISI? Okay. Is she denying these two claims? He okay. backed Sharia courts. Is she denying this claim? Let's take this one by one because the first charge that you've leveled, that the BJP levels, is extremely grave, extremely serious. Swati Malik, the BJP says, join the dots. A shady Pakistani journalist spied for ISI. BJP shows, this shows how soft the Congress was on Pakistan back terror. No background check done, given multi-city visas, shared platform with then Vice President Hamid Ansari, visited cities that the BJP insists that's where terror attacks took place, tried to pass off 2611 as Hindu terror. Very grave charges, ma'am. Gaurav, I would like to remind everybody watching this debate that when this visas were when these visas were granted, right, that time of course all the records would have been kept by the government and the same records are still with the ministries. So why does this government, instead of asking the Congress party, why does it not come, come up with something more substantial, come up with a proof and show who, on whose request and whose approval or whose uh, you know, invitations were these visas granted? Instead of just putting these, you know, blatant allegations without any evidence of any kind, that yes, there were allegations, there were invitations. How did he get so many, so many visas on so many occasions? Please find out. It is all there in public in the in government records. But if we, if the Congress Party starts explaining about how it was granted, why it was granted, please understand there is a whole security of the country also which will be, you know, uh, which will be put at stake. We cannot even after having been in that ministry, we cannot disclose on what are the parameters when these, uh, when these visas were granted. So please find out. The records are very much with the BJP. You were here does in this, 2014. Does this not reflect, okay, you've raised a fair point Can and I let ask? me get Shehzad to mm -hmm. respond to this before I bring in Mr. Sood. You are the government, you are the government in power. In case there's any illegality, violation of IPC or CRPC, arrest those responsible. Just uh, allegations won't do, says the Congress. Gaurav, we are a political party. Our job is to expose the wrongdoings of the previous government and the government's job or the agency's job is to take action. So both are not mutually exclusive. We are asking the questions because we are entitled to ask the questions and my point is that the Congress is not denying that they gave a person who has anti-India views, anti-Kashmir views, visa for five times between 2005 to 11. He shared platform with the Vice President. He went and lectured India on a conference on terrorism and this person was allowed to visit multiple cities, the Congress spokesperson officially has not said we have not done this. She is saying, we have done this, you go and check who has So she is basically saying, yes, we did it. Secondly, she, I know, Madam, please don't interrupt me. Please don't interrupt me. Secondly, is it a fact or not a fact that the cities that he claims to have visited are the cities where bomb blasts took place? Is it not a fact that your leader Digvijay Singh tried to pass off 2611 as an error act done by RSS or by Hindus? Is it not a fact that you tried to pass off every bomb blast that took place, not uh, Maligao and Samjota including not on Pakistan, but on Hindu groups in India, innocent Hindus of frame who are getting acquitted today. Are these not facts? Are these fiction? So the question to Swati you is Malik, that your home minister needs to charge. answer. That's a serious charge and let's for the moment and before I bring in Mr. Sood, let's stick to two aspects that uh, Shehzad Poonawala or the Bharatiya Janta Party raises. 26-11. Ample proof it was done by Pakistani terrorists of lashkar e taiba and yet Senior Congress leaders like Digvijay Singh tried to peddle that line that it was done by Hindu terrorists. Point one. Point two. Ample evidence Samjhota was by lashkar e taiba and Pakistani terrorists. Yet investigations were changed to show it as Hindu terror. Should the Congress not respond, ma'am? Absolutely, Gaurav. Please understand it is not the Hindu terrorism only. It is also the fact that when... The Congress party was in power. Whenever these attacks happened, there was a thorough investigation which took place. There are human rights in place. Everybody got a fair, fair chance. Everybody got a fair chance, a fair right to present their case. And that's what exactly happened. I'm Whether sorry, 2611 being shown as Hindu terror, you are saying it's absolutely fair investigation. Absolutely not. Kassab was taken to task. Please understand, he was hanged. Why was it then peddled as Hindu terror? No, I'm sorry. Who, who, uh, can, you, can you please... 
played on your screen about who peddled yes, it. I'll show it to her. If I show it to her, will she then go ahead and say that she will apologize on behalf of Congress Party? Ma'am, Dikvijay Singh is one of the tallest Congress Party leaders. He has this book in his hand. Chabbis Gara, RSS ki sazish. Gaurav, are you trying to lay... Lashkar-e-Taiba. Lashkar-e-Taiba is a Pakistan-based terrorist organization. Please, please let me finish now. Please let me make my point now. The debate today, for that matter, the discussion that we are having today, right? The discussion is about Mr. Hamid Ansari, whether these allegations are correct or false. Are you trying to say that these allegations that have been made I have a connection to 2611? Are you trying no, to say that? Are you trying to say that Congress Party has been focusing or wanting these terrorist attacks to happen in the country and passing them off as, as Hindu terrorism? Absolutely not. Let me get. Okay. No, no, one second. Before, before you go ahead, I want to show the, it's very small image, but I'll try to still show the image. If the camera person can zoom the image, uh, if you can please zoom the image uh, that I'm showing. Because the Congress spokesperson said that, who said that this was passed off as 2611, was passed off as Hindu terror? This is a book of RSS Ki Sajj 2611. Just zoom it in completely. Mm -hmm. I'm sure your producer has the pictures. No, and I'm Big sure, Swati, I'm sure and, Swati and one second, let me it. bolster this argument. Batla House, टेररिस्ट के लिए सोनिया गांधी रोई सलमान खुर्शीद ने बोला था याद है या नहीं याद है यासीन मलिक वॉज इन्वाइटेड टू द पीएमओ ही हैज पिक्चर्स विद मनमोहन सिंह ही इज बीन कन्विक्टेड ऑफ टेररिज्म इनफैक्ट इन 2006 अ पैनल वॉज फॉर्म इन विच यासीन मलिक वॉज द मेंबर एंड हु वॉज द हेड ऑफ दैट पैनल इट वॉज हामिद अंसारी एंड दैट टॉपिक वॉज टू डिस्कस हाउ मिलिटेंट शुड अनकंडीशनली बी ब्रॉट इन टू द मेन फोल्ड एंड हाउ दे शुड बी एन इंटरनेशनल एस्पेक्ट ऑन कश्मीर इश्यू दिस वॉज द मैंडेट हाफिज सईद हैज गॉन ऑन रिकॉर्ड टू से कांग्रेस इज माई फेवरेट पार्टी अफजल गुरु सपोर्टर्स हैव बीन टेकन टू द कांग्रेस पार्टी Aslam Sheikh in Maharashtra, who is the but minister, has me... signed a letter saying Yakub Ahmed should be given clemency. Madam Swati Malik, now can you please tell me, are these all facts or is it fiction? If I am saying anything that is wrong, I will quit politics. If you are lying, then your leader should quit politics. Let me also oh, bring in... Let my me leader also should bring in... quit politics, is that the point now? No, I am putting my career at stake at the charges I am making. Ma'am, politics on a national security issue is it's, extremely it's grave, not, especially when you have Pakistan, that is a David Coleman Headley, and since I covered 2611, since I covered Samjhota, permit me, ma'am, David Coleman Headley bought Kalava from Siddhi Vinayak Temple. This came out in Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, probe all that I was carried out in a Chicago courthouse. He bought Kalava and suddenly RSS ki Sazish crops up. Ma'am, join the dots, but let me bring in N.K. Sood. Sir, have we reached a stage? I want to ask you very seriously, Mr. Sood, have we reached a stage that we question a former Vice President of India on the basis of some non-descript, non-entity, motor mouth journalist or columnist in Pakistan and what he may say on some YouTube channel. This issue has to be, this issue cannot be ignored. Actually, the reputation of our Vice President, ex-Vice President is like that. I was with him in Iran from 91 to 93. During that period, Four Indian diplomats, they were systematically kidnapped, tortured, and Hamid Ansari was the ambassador. He did not take any action. Instead, he started putting all the issues, you know, all the blame on the person who were kidnapped. One was Sandeep Kapoor, second was Devi Mathur, third was Umar uh, Mohammad Umar, and the fourth was P.K. Vinu Gopal. What action Hamid Ansari should have taken, he didn't take. He deliberately did not take any action. Instead, he sided with the Iranians. He blamed the persons who were kidnapped and put all the blame on them. The attitude of Ansari was so disturbing that he wanted to destroy India's unit in Tehran. That was Sir, that's a very grave charge that you've leveled. He was the person if you were in Iran that time and if you were working with Raw, did you come back to India, make a written complaint to your superiors? Was there an inquiry conducted? Yes. Actually, no inquiry was conducted, frankly, I am telling you. It was just a cover-up because Hamid Ansari was not alone. With him, certain other officers were there. One of the officers who was there was... Uh, Sir, Ratan I Sagar, don't want names on this broadcast because those Scott individuals Master are not Patina here to defend know. themselves. My point remains, if there was merit in these yeah, allegations, yeah, no, 2014 no. onwards, there's been a BJP government, Shahzad Poonawala. It should have been inquired into. And if... Mr. Havid Ansari was found to be responsible. Action should have been taken. 
These are just baseless allegations that the Congress argues that are being used to target the former Vice President of you, India. You, you see, if the Congress party feels so aggrieved with somebody's allegations which they put in a book and long time back, they can go and sue them for defamation. They are always chasing news channels and media journalists day in and day out. Why haven't they taken this person to court if these allegations are indeed true? As far as the government is concerned, as far as the agencies are confirmed, concerned, there are allegations that are being made. Those allegations have to be made in a substantial manner for the government or the agencies to take cognizance of it. And I'm sure the government or the agencies are not averse to it. But having said that, let me ask a few questions that need to be answered. Is it not true, Gaurav, that after 26-11, there was Fali Major, who I probably think has been interviewed by you, who said that we must go hit these targets. But the Congress said, no, nothing to it. We'll give most favored nation status to them. Is this not true? Is it not true that those who cheered for Afzal Guru or organized programs for them are in the Congress party today? Okay. Let, is me, it not let true? me get Swati Malik to respond to this. Swati Malik, I have the last 40 seconds on the broadcast. Ma'am, should there not be a discreet inquiry into very grave allegations that are being leveled by Mr. N.K. Sood on the Iran aspect and the PFI points that are being raised by Mr. Shahzad Poonawal of the BJP. Gaurav, I just have two things to say. Mr. Uh, Mr. Hamid Ansari was, the, uh, was under Mr. Vajpayee's government. He was under and now as a, as a vice president in 2014, he has been the vice president under, under, Mr., under BJP's government. What action did they take? If there was any iota of truth, you are trying to... If, what Mr. Sood is trying to say that Congress or other some other officers were involved and he was being covered up for, what happens when the government changed? Mr. Vajpayee also was written a letter to by Mr. Sood where okay. Mr. Vajpayee thereafter said... So you are justifying him going on a PFI Saudi platform. Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia he charge. went on, on a PFI right? platform in 2017, ma'am. He backed Sharia courts in 2018. He and went on the IMC platform in 2022, which is backed by the ISA. You're backing all that. One by one. Please, Respond, ma'am. As, as far as Mr. Punawala's PFI argument is concerned, please tell me what has the BJP done since 2014? Since it is, it's been in power for eight okay. years, what has it done about PFI? So you will go and legitimize them. The NIA has designated you, them as a terrorist group, but that doesn't matter, obviously. Sir, be that as it may, Swati Malik has a fair point. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath shot a ban on PFI. Five, Let me just quickly on that. Two years, on the, on that, still hasn't on that quickly one point. Uh, uh, Gaurav, you know these people change their organizations from SIMI to PFI. They keep transmutating and therefore we demanded ban on individuals, not just on organizations who, who oppose that. Okay. The ban on individuals was opposed by the Congress party. Sir, they may oppose it, but it's the government in No, we part. did it. We have banned individuals also and we are okay. banning all of them. Okay. We will continue to track developments on the story very closely. I've run out of time on this part of the show, but the allegations are very grave. The former Vice President, of course, says it's a litany of falsehood, but in the days and weeks ahead, will the government probe these? That remains to be seen. To all my guests, many thanks for joining me.